Merry Christmas. It's that time of year where we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as you probably know, the Gospels of Matthew and Luke tell us about that birth. Luke chapter 2 tells us about it. But if you go back to chapter 1, we read about something that's also very important. It says, verse 1, Many have undertaken to draw up an account of the things that have been fulfilled among us just as they were handed down to us by those who from the first were eyewitnesses and servants of the word. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seemed good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. Now, that's the beginning of chapter 1, then it goes into chapter 2, and tell us about the birth of Jesus. What's unique about Christianity is that it is based on things that, that were seen by eyewitnesses, that were investigated, that were set into an orderly account, things that happened in space and time that people saw, heard, touched. The whole Bible talks about the faith being an empirical uh, way to understand, know, and justify what we believe and know, know to be true. It's very unlike other religions, Christianity is, in that it can be verified or falsified based on historical claims and archaeology and those kind of things. So Christianity purports to be a religion of faith based on historical facts and events that really happened. Take, for example, the words eyewitnesses, uh, carefully investigated, putting things in some kind of orderly account. That's not something that you say about something you're making up or something that's not really happening in history because it can be verified or falsified. But lately, people have been asking the question, can we know history? A lot of people want to argue that because historians are biased, because they have value judgments, because history is fragmented and we can't observe it, that we can't know history. That historians are too biased when they come to the material that they select what they want to select and leave out what they want to leave out, that their own biases cloud the judgments and what they write. And so if that's true, then if we cannot know history, and if Christianity is, an, is a bunch of historical events that have been written about by people like Luke and Matthew, then it will seem to follow that we cannot know about Christianity as it's historical and we can't know about historical events. But is that true? Do biases of historians prevent us from knowing historical points or events or data? I want to argue, no, they do not. If we say, for example, that a bias precludes a person from being objective, we have to ask, well, what does it mean to be biased? What does it mean to be objective? They want to say that if a person has a bias, then they can't be objective. But if you listen to that carefully, if everyone's biased, so is the person making that claim. But when they say everyone is biased and no one is objective, those are universal statements that apply to everybody everywhere. So they are making objective universal statements while being biased. And this goes to show that you don't have to be free from bias in order to be objective. What does it mean to be able to be objective? To be able to know things that can be verified or falsified independently of our subjective minds. And so we can know history. We can both be biased and be objective about historical knowledge. In fact, we would argue that the apostles and disciples were definitely biased in favor of what they knew and saw to be the truth. Because once they know it, they're going to be biased towards it. There's nothing wrong with being biased in itself. It's a matter of just knowing the truth of what happened and being able to celebrate that truth and that knowledge here at this time of the year. So once again... Merry Christmas.